Alright guys, this is the first edition of uh, the Toes and Trod question and answer uh, stuff. So uh, I'll be answering questions that people have asked either in comments or you know in private messages, but to, to make this a little more streamlined in the future, and because uh, I am going to do this regularly, like probably once a week, uh, maybe twice if I get flooded with questions. Send any questions you have to tosentribe at gmail.com and, uh, you know, make the topic question. Just name it question and ask whatever you like regarding the game, whether you need, like, tips or something or if you want my opinion on anything and I'll try to answer it in a video, uh, once or twice a week. So, that'll make it a little more streamlined in the future. Alright, so I only have a few questions because, again, I didn't really do this officially yet, so this is the first time, so hopefully with, uh, after this video people will be submitting a bunch of questions for me to answer. Um, so I've only got a handful here. So first one is from Rob's Musics. Um, in season 10, I started playing KFC. I'm the hunter in this team. Uh, I'm now on 2.1k rating and our team has problems versus uh, Caster Cleaves, mostly Mage plus Shadow Priest or Mage plus Warlock and Healer, and Feral uh, DK or Feral Warrior team. So Kitty Cleaves or Ebola Cleaves as they like to call Feral DK teams now. Uh, mainly you want to be using uh, if you're playing with a warrior, you want to be using your master's call on him as much as possible unless you're getting trained by the melee and you desperately need it for yourself, that's fine. But against wizards mostly, uh, especially when there's a mage on the team, you want to be giving your master's call to your warrior and your priest or whatever healer you're playing with. Uh, needs to make sure to dispel your warrior as much as possible because he's going to be doing the majority of the damage and if he gets, if he's kept out of CC most of the time, he's going to train wreck the warlock or even the healer. Any target is good. I recommend training the, uh, if you're playing with a Shaman, I recommend training the Warlock and um, just wind shearing and using maybe silencing shots here or there on the uh, Mage. So, uh, and of course you want to scatter trap the healer as much as possible. I also recommend definitely using Sporebat as a hunter. Sporebat is freaking amazing. I will show some clips soon using Sporebat against Wizard Cleaves, probably maybe in my next video uh, while playing PHD. Sporebat just really shits on Wizards because a lot of the times they'll pile up on a pillar and it'll what the spore bat does is it does a like a eight yard range. It's kind of like Rogue Smoke Bomb in the radius, except instead of providing a line of sight, it slows down casting speed. It's undispellable. It's just a cloud of mind numbing poison essentially. They can't get rid of it. They have to just move out of the cloud. And a lot of the times they'll all pile up behind a pillar when they're playing defensively, and they'll all be affected by it, and it just ruins their day. So use spore bat. Give Master's Call to your warrior on cooldown uh, unless you absolutely need it for yourself. Um, put as many interrupts into the mage as you can if you're not training him. The mage is also viable. If the warrior, like, I mean, if the warlock, like, teleports, you know, behind a pillar and you can't reach him, don't be afraid to swap to the mage. Do it. If you give Master's Call to the warrior and you, like, maybe silence the mage and he can't spell steal it with, for a couple of seconds, you can put him so behind so fast. It's really easy. Um, make sure to CC the shaman or whatever healer they're using as much as possible as well. Uh, against Kitty Cleaves, uh, like, warrior, uh, feral X or, uh, DK feral X, uh, of course, you always want to be scatter trapping the healer. Don't use frost traps unless your scatter gets ruined by like snake poison or a warrior bleed or something, and you can't actually scatter trap. And then your you know your cooldowns are out of sync between your scatter and your trap. Sometimes you can drop a frost trap, but I definitely recommend because if you don't CC like a holy paladin, for instance, you're never going to kill anything. You have to CC them, and as the hunter, you are the primary source of CC on your team. So you want to be putting every scatter trap silencing shot. Uh, against this comp specifically on their, it's most likely going to be a Holy Paladin, since most Kitty Cleaves and uh, Feral DKs run with Paladins or Shamans. So you definitely want to put uh, all your CC on the healer. And I definitely recommend you can start on the Warrior, they're both viable kill targets, but I definitely recommend training the Feral as much as possible because if you put, if you can manage to put the Feral on defensive, um, he'll get far less Cyclones out and far less pressure. If you let a Feral run loose and run wild, he's going to decimate you. So. Definitely do what you can to pressure that Feral Druid. Now, one thing you can do at lower ratings is uh, you can Scare Beast. You can have a Mouse Over Scare Beast macro, which I do use, but um, the problem with it is you try to use it against Feral Druids at low ratings. It'll work a lot of the time, but the higher rating you get, the more aware they are, and a lot of people use a mod that tells them when it's being cast on themselves, and any half-decent Feral Druid will shift it every time, and it'll just waste your time. So you can feel it out. You can try to scare Beast a guy one or twice, you know, once or twice, and if he shifts it, then you know, and you learn, you adapt to that player specifically, and you say, okay, I'm not going to bother scare using Scare Beast anymore. So um, definitely try to beat the shit out of the Feral though. But if Feral gets away and uses all the bear form cooldowns and stuff, and you're really not going to kill him. Uh, you can easily swap to the Warrior if he's out of position too. Just make sure you lock down that Paladin as much as freaking possible. Against the DK variant, DKs are much easier to kill than Warriors, I find, for melee teams. Uh, well, like Hunter, Warrior, you know, Cleavy type teams. 
Uh, so you can definitely kill the DK pretty well, but uh, again, you can't let the Feral run around too long uh, without disruption, because if you let him do what he wants the whole game, he's going to control your team with Cyclones and insane damage. So I still definitely recommend uh, Tunnel Visioning the Feral most of the time. Alright, uh, next question. I dude 407 The Sayer Arena match just began and the gates opened. How do you know which player to start on, and how do you deter uh, determine which player to focus first? I don't know if by focus he means focus fire, or to put on your, you know, set as your focus target, but, um, generally speaking, it's a matter of, you know, what comp you're playing and what comp they're playing. Usually, your comp will have a set uh, target for most comps. Sometimes you'll change it if the enemy players adapted really well to it. It just really depends. Like, for uh, if I'm playing PhD, uh, I like killing anything that my DK can stick on really easily. Um, Warlocks, because it can shut them down and not let them cast. Against MLS, uh, as PhD, we usually go on the Warlock. And then a lot of the time we'll switch to the Shaman because DK's rape healers bad. So uh, it really just depends. A lot of the time, if, uh, if I'm playing anything that involves a Shaman and a Warlock, usually the Shaman will have Earth Shield on the Warlock. So a lot of the time, uh, like if I'm playing WMP or PhD or whatever, if you can uh, get the Shaman in the opener and maybe silence or stun him uh, with a CC on the Warlock instead, you can actually pressure a Shaman right off the bat without Earth Shield on himself really hard, and you can often make him use his Trinket and or Spirit Link and or Nature Swiftness really early in the match. Like when I was playing WMP, I would come out of Invis on my mage, and I'd cheat the Warlock and, and immediately pet Nova Deep Freeze the Shaman, and just shatter him really hard in that opener while trying to LOS the Fell Hunter, so I don't have to juke his silence. And if my Warrior got on him at the same time in that Deep Freeze, he would definitely have to come out of that, and he'd usually have to trinket something, like my Blanket Silence after the Deep Freeze, or a DR Throwdown even. He'd have to trinket something and usually have to NS, and usually he would even, unless they peel this really well, like there's maybe an RLS and the Rogue just did a ton of peeling, um, they usually have to blow everything, so uh, it just really depends. You have to feel it out for your comp specifically. If you can tell me what comp you play, I can give you, and what comps you're having trouble against in a future video, I can answer that more specifically. Okay, next question is from Shifu. I just hit 85 on my mage, undergeared of course, and I have a lot of trouble in 1v1 situation. Uh, I've only played situations. I've only played two so far, and I end up in 1v1 situations every, you know, one out of three games usually. If you can give me a few tips about 1v1, that would be great. Well, uh, it kind of depends on what class you're fighting, first of all. Gear matters a lot in this game, so being undergeared is always going to screw you, even against classes that you normally destroy one-on-one, -on -one, like rogues and warriors. They can give you trouble if you're horribly undergeared, because, you know, there's a certain amount of damage you have to do to beat a warrior's passive regeneration and stuff, and if you're a fresh 85 with garbage gear, you're going to have trouble even with, a, a, you know, a half decent warrior, even if you should beat the shit out of them. So, um, I would say against melee, you want to be using, um, well, for one, don't forget to refresh your ice barrier every time you can, um, assuming it hasn't been absorbed already. I mean, assume, assuming you don't currently have one up, don't just overlap it, of course. But use ice barrier, keep it up at all times. Um, don't forget to use Mage Ward against, like, Frost DKs it's really useful against, because it'll absorb Howling Blasts and stuff. It really all just comes down to experience with each individual class, um, you know, and better players, of course, will play differently than worse players, so you have to adapt when you fight better players. But um, I would just say, in general, generally speaking, um, against melee, use Cone of Cold on cooldown. I know a lot of mages neglect that. Um, you want to use your all your Novas on cooldown as much as you can and get as many instant casts off when you can't actually hard cast. But also know what your opponent has. If you Nova a warrior and he hasn't used his Trinket or uh, Blade Storm yet and you're like really close to him and you start trying to cast the Shatter, chances are he's going to Blade Storm out of that first Nova just to keep you uh, from casting and shattering him really hard because there's no reason not to, or he might try to Spell Reflector or something, or you'll Deep Freeze him, he'll probably Trinket, anticipate stuff like that. If you Deep Freeze him and you start casting a Shatter, be ready for him to Trinket, because then as soon as he does, you're going to have to do something like Cone of Cold him again or something. And then he might Blade Storm, react quickly, blink away from it, you know what I mean? Force him to cancel our Blade Storm and then leap back to you. And uh, you just got to really anticipate what they're doing, and this all boils down to knowing all the classes in the game. So uh, I definitely recommend, go to Wowhead or MMO Champion and look at Every class ability of every, you know, class in the game, even all their talents, uh, learning about the game is key to beating every class in the game. Like, you're not gonna be successful in this game if you don't have the knowledge of the game. It's a very knowledge-based game, so definitely do that. Alright, uh, Ndepth31 asks, when, whenever you scatter trap, do you have it in a cast sequence macro for scattering and then freeze trapping them or tra trap launcher, or are they on separate vines? I have it all on separate vines. Uh, 
I don't like the clunkiness of having those macros, and sometimes I don't want a trap launcher. Sometimes I don't have to focus to trap launch, and sometimes I don't want to, it to be obvious. Because when you launch a trap, it's much easier for an enemy to, like, teammate to eat the trap from their healer. Um, so, you know, because it does an obvious animation, you launch it, and it does, like, a little Frost Nova animation. So, sometimes I prefer to set the trap at my feet, because it's a little bit harder for them to pinpoint exactly where that trap is and get on it before it procs on their healer. Uh, sometimes I like to just set it when I monkey stun them instead of scatter so it doesn't signal to their opponent. So I like them to be completely separate because I like to have full control in every situation. There, I don't ever use macros where I would sometimes not want to use trap launcher for instance. Sometimes I want to scatter and I don't want to set a trap, you know what I mean? So I don't like cast sequences at all. This is the first video for answering questions. Um, I hope you like this at all. Maybe some of you find it boring. You can just skip these or whatever. Uh, just let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments or something. Uh, and don't forget to send any of your questions labeled question in the title uh, to toastandtribe at gmail.com and I will try to answer questions in a video every week. Thanks for watching and peace out.